Babali Show, Episode 5, The Dowry Bubble in the Muslim World. This podcast has been brought to you by HalfRDeen.com, a Muslim marriage website designed for those who want to find their other half privately. Because the only people that should know you're looking to get married are people who are looking to get married. Try HalfRDeen today. Look to your right, there's a bunch of single men that want to get married. Look to your left, there's a bunch of single women who want to get married. But most of them are not getting married. And one of the reasons why more and more Facebook profiles show single or it's complicated is because of the dowry. Did you say Dow Jones? No, I said dowry. What's the difference? Dow Jones is a stock market. It goes up and down. The dowry only seems to be going up. Ouch. I think I'm going to press some people's buttons on this one. are forced to be politically correct, rises one man, one voice, who changed everything. Hey man, why are you all serious? This is just a podcast. <laughs> Let's talk about what they don't want to talk about. Welcome to the Bubba Ali Show. I am your host, Bubba Ali. Getting married is always a hot topic and one of my favorite topics to actually cover. You see, in Islam, in order for two people to get married, there are guidelines that need to be followed. Contrary to popular belief, in order for a marriage to be valid, the consent of both the male and the female need to be there and the wali with the agreed upon dowry. What is a dowry? It's a gift a woman asks for. You mean, what? I, I, I can pick anything I want? Yeah. Let me give you an example. How about 100 pounds of exotic chocolate? Yep. How about a cat, a Persian one with fancy whiskers that eats out of a fancy glass? Yep. How about a brand new car? Yep. How about a briefcase full of cold, hard cash with a bow on it? Yep. How about me driving a brand new car with a fancy Persian cat sitting in the front seat with the fancy whiskers eating out the fancy glass while I'm eating 100 pounds of chocolate and holding on a briefcase full of cash while I'm laughing all the way to the bank? (laughs) Yep. The dowry has a minimum but no maximum. Now I know, the whole dowry thing sounds something really strange for non-Muslims who are listening to the show. Then again, the idea of two dudes getting married while going through a drive-thru in Las Vegas by Elvis impersonator is very strange for the Muslims that are listening to the show. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) At the end, the reason why we Muslims follow these guidelines is because we want to please our creator. You know what I mean? So it's it doesn't really make sense for a lot, I guess, a lot of non-Muslims because they don't understand why we follow these steps. But for Muslims, we know that Islam is the total package. Everything from the way we pray to the way we fast to even the way we get married is all through the guidelines of Islam. So we see the, the dowry issue of today, and the problem isn't the dowry, but rather the mentality of the people. To enlighten us on this subject, I decided to bring in a very special guest to talk about this thing. And he's actually one of the coolest sheikhs I know. Even though he's a big guy, he's not intimidating at all. But if he wasn't a sheikh, he would probably be in the MMA. But I don't think he would like do that well because he smiles a lot. He's like really, really friendly. And because his smile is contagious, his opponent will start smiling too. And then they would end up just having like a smile off, like a, <laughs> like a smiling contest. And they end up probably becoming friends. And the audience would see the whole thing and they'll do, aww. But I don't know. I can give him like a regular intro like I do with my other guests. But I think he needs like a special intro. You know what? Even though he's on the MMA, let me give him an in-ring intro. Can we do that? All right, let's do that. Our ladies and gentlemen, we are moments away from the moment you have been waiting for. Welcome to the main event in the right corner. Wearing white and towering at six feet, two inches tall. His professional record includes an associate degree in commerce and social sciences, followed by a degree in the Arabic language, followed by an impressive bachelor's degree in Sharia with a specialization in feet and usul al feet. Hailing from Calgary, Canada, here is the pound for pound, one of the happiest shakes in the world, Sheikh Naveed Aziz. Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. 
Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today's topic is a bit controversial because it's something that sisters choose, and that's the dowry. So I think a lot of people look at this almost like a price tag, like, oh, this is how much my daughter's worth versus this is how much your daughter's worth. So for example, I think this is my theory, Sheikh, on how this whole thing came about. Uh-huh. One father said, you know, how much is uh, so-and-so giving their dowry for? And the man will say, oh, they are giving 1000 1000 My daughter is better than their daughter. 5000 <laughs> And then the next guy will come and says, how much? 5000 Our daughter is the best. She's Hafiz of Quran. 50000 And then it keeps going and keeps going. It's like the stock market that keeps going up. And everyone is sweating bullets because the men are like, how are we going to get married? Yeah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. So Ali, I, I want to share a story with you at this time. And this is like the, the like sort of the reason why I became passionate about this topic. Okay. This is probably about six months ago. I'm in my office and this brother comes in and he's like, look, you know, my, myself and my father-in-law, we've had a dispute. I'd like you to arbitrate it between us. Okay. I was like, sure, no problem, you know, come in. And the guy comes in and I'm like, okay, so what's the issue? And he's like, you know, I want to get married to his daughter. And I've proposed a dowry of $1 million, but he's rejected it. <laughs> what? I'm like, $1 million? <laughs> I'm like, you know, that's so generous of you. I can't imagine what the issue is. Like, what could possibly be wrong with a million dollars? <laughs> and the father in law, he's like, this is ridiculous. This is absurd. I want one million up front and two million muakhar. And, you know, the concept of muakhar is if they get divorced, then he has to give another two million. Now, Ali, this is the, the catch to the story. This brother just freshly graduated from university a year ago. He is not a doctor. He's not some crazy scientist. He was, you know, mashallah, he had a good job as a regular accountant. So I was assuming at most, you know, he probably makes between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. I mean, do the math. Even if he wanted to pay off that $1 million, it would take him his whole life, Ali. His whole life. Lifetime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. $3 million is like mathematically impossible unless this guy wins like the, the, the some sort of halal lottery or something. <laughs> and it was just absolutely absurd. And like no matter what we tried to do with the father-in-law, he would not have it. He's like, no, my number is set. I'm not budging from it. And it was like the most uh, you know, absurd conversation I've had with someone in a very long time, subhanAllah. Where do they get these numbers from? That's why I'm so confused about. On, on, honestly, look, it's like literally, as you were mentioning it, it's this concept of, you know, pride that our daughter has to have the highest price tag because she's better than everyone else's daughter. Now, from the Islamic perspective, two things are being forgotten over here. The first thing is the Prophet ﷺ made it very, very clear that the best of weddings are those that have the least financial burden, mm. right? Yes. And this includes not only the cost of the wedding, but it also includes the dowry. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, you know, encouraged to have very humble dowries. Now, this needs to be understood in its proper context. The second thing, you know, I was about to mention and add on to this was the dowry of a girl is meant to be, you know, the average of what a girl of her status in her community in her society has and that's you know stick to the status quo basically not to make things difficult for people now why did islam legislate and stipulate this Mm -hmm. just so this sense of competition doesn't exist (laughs) right like we're not supposed to compete with one another for who has the higher dowry like our status with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not increase or decrease based upon how much dowry we pay it always comes down to taqwa and i think you know those important concepts are often forgotten in, in this situation what impact do you think this whole dower thing has had on like the Muslim marriages? Huge impacts. I mean, huge impacts. So like in this, particularly in a segment of our society, they have this concept of muakhar. And muakhar is like, you know, this is like a, a contingency plan if they end up getting divorced. Like an exit strategy. An exit strategy, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... And it's like some ridiculous amount. Of, usually it's like two or three times. And in some cases, you know, even 10 times what the, the initial dowry itself is. Now, there's several points that, that, that come out of this. Number one, when the guy is getting married, he's like already, you know, financially in debt because he probably has to, you know, set up a new house, get a new car, pay for the wedding, pay for, you know, all, all the foods, pay for all gifts, pay for a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. So he's already in debt. That's, you know, it's already difficult. Then you add on top of that, the dowry itself. And this dowry, it becomes a debt, right? Like people think, you know, the the, the dowry is something that's very easy going. If this man passes away, like it's a debt in his neck that someone has to pay off. It's not pardoned unless the girl herself pardons it. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah, it's scary that a lot of people don't know this. You know, it's like you're about to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your soul is suspended, you know, from any judgment and reckoning till your debts are settled. Sheikh, that makes me want to be scared 
like I can imagine any youth could be scared to death of trying to get married because like I can't get married. Why? I don't want to be dead for the rest of my life. Exactly, exactly. And that's why subhanAllah, the Prophet wasallam was so spot on when he said that a woman is married for four reasons. And he ended off by saying that if you marry for the sake of the deen, then you know you'll be happy and you'll be content. Mm. But when you marry for other reasons, you know you're, you're putting your, your your fate into chance. Mm. Things may work out, things may not work out. But if you find a good religious family and particularly that has the taqwa of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, inshallah, it'll make things easy. Now let me get back to your previous point in terms of you know what effects does this have on the community and society itself? Yeah. So once you know you start raising the concept of the dowry and the price tag that it comes with. Yeah. You know, it's you basically basically making the haram very very easy for the people, and the halal becomes extremely extremely difficult, which is against Islamic principles. We're supposed to be the exact opposite. We should be making the haram as difficult as possible and the halal as easy as possible. Yeah, and that's why you will see that you know the, the concept of pornography, the girlfriend boyfriend culture, even like you know promiscuity, you know outside of marriage, they're becoming so rampant, like so you know common. That it's not even taboo in our communities anymore. Wow. You know, it's, it's so strange, subhanAllah. There's this huge taboo with polygamy, but, you know, which is, you know, religiously sanctioned. But if you used to commit zina or if he doesn't pray or he drinks alcohol, oh, it's no big deal. You know, it's not a problem at all. The irony. <laughs> exactly. The irony behind it, subhanAllah. So those concepts of, you know, like the, like the pornography and the promiscuity, yeah, and that's, you know, what the, the high diaries lead to. And this is what happens if you don't follow the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, fitna and facade will, will take over the lands. And that's what we're seeing in our time, subhanAllah. Do you think this dowry, these high numbers are coming from the woman who's getting married? Or do you think it's coming from her parents? And do you think that's the problem? Um, I, I think it's a combination of the two. Like there's certain girls that, you know, they feel very insecure about themselves and they become extremely greedy. So they're like, you know, I want this uh, high price tag. You know, hopefully it'll, it'll scare him off from ever divorcing me. Right. Yeah. But then what she fails to realize is that she and she's made things so difficult. He might not divorce her, but he's going to he might he's going to emotionally torture, her, psychologically torture her in the marriage, wow. just so that she'll pow and like she'll pardon the dowry and he can get out of the marriage scot free. Wow. So it's like it's like a catch twenty two. Then the second thing, Ali, this is like the most craziest thing I've ever seen in my life is that you know in certain cultures they have this concept of the parents deciding the dowry so that the dad can actually get a cut out of it. <laughs> This is crazy. I'm you, it's insane. It's like the dad's like, you know, I raised my daughter for like 20 years of her life. I fed her. I sent her to school. I did all this other stuff. You know, why shouldn't I get a cut out of yeah, it? Yeah, I'm gashing in. Ching-ching, ching-ching. Exactly. It's like, you know, I couldn't play the lottery, but I'm going to sell my daughter instead. SubhanAllah. Sheikh, I have this video where I made, where I actually brought up this issue in one of my YouTube videos. And the guy is reading the letter of the request from the sister's family. It's saying, oh, and I want this and I want this. And my mother, she wants granite kitchen countertops. My uh, <laughs> brother needs jet skis. My sister says, what? This is not Santa Claus. This is not a wish list. But unfortunately, it's, it's come down to that. People think that they're cashing in as soon as someone of their family is getting married. It's unfortunate. Ali, it's as if they treat their, their daughters like a commodity. And, you know, people misunderstand the concept of dowry. So, uh, Sheikh, please tell us what the concept is. So the concept of dowry, this is like, you know, a sign of affection, a sign of commitment between the husband and the wife. That, you know, mm-hmm. before you know, we become husband and wife, I want to show you how much I care for you, how much I love for you how much I love you, how much I'm going to be willing to take care of you mm-hmm. by, providing, by providing this gift for you. And this gift is yours. You know, I, Islamically, I can't take it back. Whereas now it's become like, you know, if you want me, this is what you have to pay. It's almost <laughs> like, and please excuse my, my language, Ali, when I say this, it's almost as if they're trying to make, like, you know, make prostitution halal through marriage. Wow. It's like you pay you know, a price tag for, for that relationship. And it, it's so, so like disgusting when you think about it, subhanAllah. It's sad how we've gone to this point. I mean, what advice do you have for the people who are looking to get married? I mean, people who are dealing with the parents who are insisting on having the dowry as some crazy price tag that's making it very difficult for the sister to get married. Yeah, subhanAllah. You know, it's very, very unfortunate. So dealing with, you know, the, the, the parents, this is like the, the loophole. You know, in, in Islam, you know, we have this general principle. Every time things become difficult, the sharia will come and provide an ease in that situation. So in this situation where a girl and a boy like each other and everything's good, they're compatible and they're ready to get married. And the only thing that literally is stopping them from getting married is this price tag in between. Yeah. Then in that situation, I would say, you know, give in to your parents' request. Whatever the parents say, they want 100000 on the contract, put 100000 At the end of the day, once they get married, the girl has full right and authority 
to pardon that, that, that dowry and that debt. Wow, she has all power. Power of attorney is the sister. Exactly, it's in the sister's hand. So as long as you trust the sister, as long as you know, she's, she, she has the you know, deen and taqwa, you know, whatever the parents stipulate, put it on the contract. You guys eventually get married. The parents don't have direct jurisdiction in that marriage. If the girl wants to pardon it, it's purely her right to do so at that time. In terms of, you know, advice for people getting married, you know, I can only emphasize what the Prophet Sallallahu said, that, you know, if you want to have barakah in your marriage, make it the least financially burdensome. And this is people, you know, they need to understand this. If you come in on a white horse and, you know, you feed people caviar and escargot and all this fancy stuff, trust me, you know, not even a year later, not even like 10 days later, not even like three days later, people will forget all of that. People will not remember any of that, right? Yeah. But they will remember the fact that you got married and they will be happy for that fact. So whether you feed them, you know, chicken and rice or bread and hummus or, you know, some crazy expensive thing, or if you have some extravagant wedding or a simple wedding, you know, at the end of the day, people want to see you happy. They don't care about what you spent or, you know, what, what, you, you, what you've done. Yeah, because the reality is everyone's going to forget because the next wedding will come along except for one person. Yeah. The one paying the bill. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, I don't forget. Yeah. $25,000, brother. $25,000. Yeah, subhanAllah. So, I mean, keep that in mind. A second thing I would mention is, you know, going back to the whole concept of, of doing what we can to make the high easy yeah. and I think you know our generation we are trend setters right we want to set trends yeah. so if we're gonna set trends you know let it be good and halal and sunnah trends right let's make marriage easy let's make the haram difficult and let's move forward in that way inshallah inshallah is it true that the more excessive the dowry is the more disliked it is so I mean this needs to be uh, understood in in its context so you can agree to a high dowry mm-hmm. if there are two extremely rich families coming together. Okay. So for example, it's like two kings getting together. <laughs> you know, you don't expect like a dowry of like $10 or something like that, right? Okay. You expect something reasonable according to the societal norms of, of what a princess would get. Of course. Right? So the same thing over here is that as long as it's, you know, this is a societal norm and it's not financially burdensome upon the people, then that is permissible. But as soon as it becomes financially burdensome or goes beyond whatever the societal norm is, then yes, it would definitely be disliked and you know considered harmful for sure. Is there more barakah for the lower amount or it doesn't make a difference? I would say yes. There's definitely more barakah for the lower amount. I mean, you know, when you make things easy for the people, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that. He loves people that make things easy for, for, for other people. But again, I want to give a disclaimer over here. You know, we have this movement between men and women where men are becoming extra stingy when it comes to the dowry. So, <laughs> so I mean, I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's like I remember I was at a gathering, you know, a couple of weeks back uh-huh. and sharing like marriage stories of who had the lesser dowry. The guy's like, you know, I only paid 5000 He's like, you know, I only paid 2000 I only paid 1000 And one guy busts out, you know what? I only gave, you know, my wife a Quran. That was our thing. And I was like, you know, what type of competition is this? This is like, <laughs> That's not a that's not a good competition. Not at all. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us the best of us are those that are best to their wives. Yes. It is a part of our pride, a part a part of our dignity, a part of our honor for us to take care of our families and our women folk. You know, any dollar we spend is considered a sadaqah that will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So this is not the time to be stingy. You want to be stingy? Be stingy when you're buying your next technological gadget. Be stingy when you're buying your next article of clothing. Be stingy when you're buying a car. But don't be stingy when it comes to your family. So that's from like the guy's perspective. And from the woman's perspective, it's the exact opposite that, that I alluded to earlier. That subhanAllah, you know, certain sisters are very, very insecure. And this leads them to becoming extremely greedy when it comes to the dowry. So even though, you know, the, the social norm may be like $5,000, they'll be like, you know what? I want $50,000. And I was like, why are you making things difficult for no reason? Like, do you not want to get married? Do you intentionally not want to get married? Like, why are you trying to self-sabotage yourself? <laughs> SubhanAllah. And, and it's just crazy, man. SubhanAllah. Wow. You know, I've actually heard that the dowry issue has caused an increase in homosexuality in parts of the Muslim world because people just can't get married. Have you heard anything like that? I mean, this is what I was talking about earlier is that it definitely leads to sexual perversion. And by sexual perversion, I mean people getting addicted to pornography, people, you know, going to, to see prostitutes. And, you know, even leading to homosexuality, of course. And yeah, I believe it's becoming quite common in, in, in the Muslim lands that when marriage has become so difficult, Allah did not create men to, you know, control their sexual desires for an unlimited amount of time. Yeah. They can do it for, for a limited amount of time. But eventually, you know, the, 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 you know, life needs to take its natural toll and it needs to progress. And it's very unfortunate that, you know, it's led to pornography. It's led to the homosexuality. It's led 
to you know prostitution being rampant and, and so on and so forth. And I, for sure, I, I believe it's a very common trend in a lot of Muslim countries, unfortunately. As a guy who runs a Muslim matchmaking website, i always looking for ways to help people get married. All I can do is connect them with one another. But after that point, it's up to them. And, and if it comes down to like, this is a perfect match between the male and the female and the families get along and then everything stops at the dowry and they part ways, it's kind of sad, especially if it doesn't fall into the category you're talking about, if it's not the norm, right? So he's asking for something excessive, like the story you initially told us of the $1 million to $2 million on the back end. I mean, this is not realistic. And unfortunately, these sisters are going to get older and older and their fathers are the ones that are holding them back at points because of this whole dowry. And it's not really religious. It's, it sounds like this decision is more of a cultural decision. Is that right? 110%. It's not only is it a cultural decision, it's shaitan playing with people's minds. It's people chasing the dunya in, in a way that, that it should not be chased. It's, it's a wide variety of things. And Ali, you know, that, that, that thing of delaying marriage is, is becoming so scary in our times where the average age of getting married was like, you know, let's just say 18, 19 years old. That's just about 50 years ago. Uh-huh. Now it's like, you know, add 10 years to that. 28, 29 is the average age someone is getting married. Wow. And that's, that's just a scary thought, subhanAllah. Like, as I was alluding to earlier, that, you know, we weren't meant to control our, our sexual desires for that long. Yep. Right? You can fast, you can lower your gaze. You can, you know, limit your interaction with the opposite gender, but a time comes where you need to get married. You know, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Yeah, you can't tell them to fast for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, you no, know, due to these high numbers, you know, men, when they start thinking about marriage, they're like, you know what? I'll probably have to work for 10 years before I can possibly get married. And that naturally, you know, delays it for the sisters as well, because there's no suitors for them, subhanAllah. They're all scared off. Wow. Yeah. That's why I brought you onto this podcast because I think you see things of marriage situations, people not getting married that the average person may not see. And sometimes people feel like, oh, it's just my isolated issue. And you shed a good amount of light on this topic. And it's very thought provoking. Do you have any advice to share with the people who are listening? I would only advise, you know, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us with. And that is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, a day will come where we're going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will question us about what we did. And we need to have a good answer for every decision that we made, every action that we took. If we don't, we should not partake in that action. And this particularly ties into the dowry. You know, for the fathers, I would say, fear Allah with respect to your daughters. They are not a commodity. They are not merchandise that you're selling off. You should not have a, a, a cut in it, right? The advice to my sisters is, you know what? Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your risk is destined for you from wherever it's going to come. Allah has written for you, for written it for you already. Do not be so insecure and start preparing for divorce even before you get married. You know, psychologically, that will self-sabotage you. For the men, I would say, look, be a real man. Be proud of spending upon your family. Be proud of you know, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by you know, fulfilling the, the contract of marriage that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and you know, giving the, the, the dowry that you, you've agreed upon. It's not a, a competition of stinginess. And that would be my general advice. You know, one last thing I'll mention over here, and this is like another cultural taboo, uh, Ali. Yes. Which was when the guy's family asks for a dowry. Mm. So in, in certain parts of the world, when uh, a girl and a guy are getting married, the guy will give uh, a symbolic gift to the girl. It'll be like, you know, something like $100 or something like that. Okay. But then the girl's family has to buy like a brand new TV, a new sofa set, you know, furnish the whole house, you know, buy them a new car, maybe even buy them a new house. And it's the exact opposite of what Islam dictated. And this is obviously coming from other religions and from other cultures. And it's slowly, you know, seeping its way into, into Islamic culture. Wow. So I would say, you know, we need to educate ourselves about, you know, what Islam actually says about this. It's the, the dowry is the girl's right, not the dad's, not the husband's family, not the husband. It's purely the girl's right. It's amazing. Like Muslims, not only do we not follow our own religion but we start taking other people's religion <laughs> exactly. and then we add it to Islam and we call it all Islam and then we wonder why people are confused yeah subhanAllah that's very true Ali. that's very true well Sheikh you have been once again very insightful very thought provoking you've enlightened us mashallah and every time I speak to you I always learn something new I just want to say Jazakallah khair for coming on to this podcast can you please let us know how we can find you online for sure so I'm on Facebook it's facebook.com backslash Naveed Aziz 
Same thing on Twitter, twitter.com backslash Nabe Disease. And those are the two main places that I hang out online. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. It's been a pleasure having you. My pleasure, Ali. This is Baba Ali. You have been listening to the Baba Ali Show. You've listened to all the way to the end, mashallah. So all I ask you to do is go to babaali.com. Leave us your comment. We want to read it. And make sure you go to iTunes and click on the subscribe button if you like this whole entire series and tell your friends about it. This is Baba Ali. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye-bye, Lee Show.